Hello everyone, Jamurkin here, and this is going to be the third part in the VIOT hardware series, as I've been calling it. Uh, and I want to show you something very interesting and very cool, and that's just start up the machine for you to see this. That's the VIOT booting. Now let's go into the machine and find out what's so really cool about this machine. As you can clearly see, I'm booting off the 32 gigabyte SSD and the hard drive that comes, which is the 500 gigabyte option I selected, is here as 452 gigabytes. Uh, about 13 gigabytes is taken up for recovery uh, and I left that there for reasons I will explain soon. So in order to give you a better picture of what's really going on let's look inside the machine. For those who care about this here we go. As you can clearly see my primary hard disk is at a data transfer rate of 7.9 clearly maxed out uh, because of the fact that it is running off the SSD. Now many of you may be wondering how I was able to get this to boot off the SSD. Well I'll explain all that but for now let's start with a video game. I'm gonna load up Fraps that way you can see the frame rate. Fraps is enabled. Let's do Fallout New Vegas. Uh, so the options I'm going with is actually high detail settings, which uh, provides me uh, four samples of anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering at eight samples, as it specifies here. But the resolution is not full resolution. It's uh, letterboxed. Uh, that's what it specifies. But it's a 1280 by 720 resolution. So I'll show you examples of that. Fallout New Vegas is the only modern game that I have, unfortunately, because I'm not as big as a PC gamer as I used to be. Uh, but all right, so you can clearly see the FPS in the corner there. The volume's up. I'm a mouse and keyboard person, though. When I do play PC games, I like some people. So let me load this up and the Mojave. Wasteland. Let's see here. All right. So you can see the frame rate's actually quite low. It's 18, um, and that's on high settings. But as you can see, I'm moving around here, and moving around is is very fluid. So I'm going in and out of my pit boy here very quick even though it's only 18 frames per second that's getting up to 20 now I just entered an area a bunch of stuff came up it's about 20 so music's playing in the background there's actually a bunch of uh, Brahmin I think they're Brahmin no excuse me I think they call it something else Brahmin are from Fallout 3 they're the double-headed cows uh, Fallout in Vegas they have these ram things that I forgot what the name of them are but we'll see them soon I'm going to throw a bunch of dynamite at them to get them running at me and see them coming in to the scenery in there. You can kind of see that. If I get too close there, they'll come after me because they have their children with them. So what I'm going to do is, first, I'm going to throw a fragman right there. That way when they come after me, they get blown up. Then I'm going to throw a bunch of dynamite at them. A big horn bull, that's what they're called. Let's get closer there. There we go. I'm just gonna throw one. Now these things are gonna get really angry at me. Here we go. Here we go. 
I'm about to die, I'm about to die, I'm about to die. Alright, now I'm going to try the incinerator. You can see the frame rate, it's getting up there. Oh yeah, there we go. I like smoke bowl in the morning. Alright, let's see. Alright, they got nothing on them, of course. I just demolished the whole family. Hopefully you saw the frame rate, because I could, clearly did not, because I was too busy playing the game. But, alright, that's enough of that. Just to, oh, there's a little cub here. Is the cub going to come after me too? Oh, this is really, this is really sad. This is a calf. Can't kill a calf. Yeah, I'm taking thought I can. So you can clearly see the frame rate is around like 20, and yet this game is still playable. It's part of the reason I like this game, because it not only looks great, but it it's still playable. All right, let's uh, try something else. So now I'm going to play an HD trailer of the Avengers, 1080p. Volume is maxed out. Now it is. Alright, here's a video called Big Buck Bunny playing at 1080p on the VioT and the frame rate is there in the corner. You can see the TN panel there, how it changes in color as you change the angle. Let's change this angle offset so you can see the angle of the panel. Now I want to show you a demo of typing with the keyboard. So typing on this keyboard actually is not that bad. So as you can see there, I typed that whole sentence. What I can do is, since I want you to be able to see me typing as well as the text on the screen. You're gonna kind of get a both there. So I just keep this very large. I get rid of this laptop keyboard is quite comfortable for typing as well as gaming because of the very short. Uh, I like to call it push distance or key distance is another one. Since things are so f spread out, I feel that it doesn't bother my hand as much. To prove this to you all, I will be typing the entire review, written review portion with this laptop. And if I have finger cramps at the end, in my conclusion, I will specify. If I zoom into this keyboard here, you can, since they're black and the light comes off, you can see the light come onto the keyboard so let me turn down the brightness and I can barely see that. Let me turn down the brightness for you. 
I'm going to type at night for you using just my ability to touch the keyboard. So I guess this is a good way of testing this out. Let's do this. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy alligator. I think the fact that I can make out the keys because of the, the contrast of the silver, grayish silver looking uh, 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 magnesium here, painted magnesium, with the black keys really contrast and show you those keys. Um, now the keyboard layout of this unit is actually identical to the Vio S, which does have backlight, uh, backlit keys. So that'd be a pretty cool project in the future to switch out the Vio S keyboard, the Vio T keyboard for the Vio S keyboard. Now to show you the BIOS, I'm actually gonna reset this machine and actually boot into the BIOS. So let's do that. Now you have to push F2. It's not specified anywhere anywhere in this the manuals that I've seen at least that came with the machine that is um, probably it is on the online manual but you got to push F2 all right so as you can clearly see here the hard system memory hard disk drive as you can see there the system memory is uh, 4 gigs um, and the hard disk drive is 500 gigs and so the BIOS considers the hard disk drive the actual hard disk drive it doesn't detect the SD excuse me SSD as a hard drive at all in this machine because it's not meant to be so the BIOS version at the time of this video was R0190E4 and that's my model number SVT131190X and ME version have no idea all right Rev 3.7 for the inside H2O system setup utility. Uh, and that's the BIOS they use, inside H2O, which is pretty much a BIOS that makes you do absolutely nothing, gives you no flexibility whatsoever with this, other than to enable virtualization because people made a big fuss about it. Um, uh, this system support, uh, this anti-theft, that's what AT stands for, as you can see there. It also gives you the ability to set a machine password and a user password. You want that. It allows you to set your boot oper uh, configuration here, which is just enable the, like a, like you can do USB booting with this option, or you can do a DVD USB drive with this option. That's about it. Um, and all you have for boot priority is external device. You have internal hard disk drive and you have network. That is it. No SSD is mentioned at all anywhere because you're not meant to boot from it. But how did I boot from it? How is that possible? You know what the answer is, everyone, ladies and gentlemen? Linux. All right, so you probably didn't expect me to say that, but it's, it's the truth. So I'm gonna uh, show you uh, kind of the stages that I took to boot from the SSD.